So what I hope to achieve, ladies and gents, is if I can have everyone pull out a pen and paper because we're going to jump into the tangible steps here and we're going to start from the ground level in the form of a event. What does an event look like? So obviously we've got our main event, which is where we collectively all gather. Our, la- our live event is wherever it has, happens to be at a convention center, in a meeting room, at your offices. Well, that's gone. We, we know this now. It's, it's no news. There's no surprise there. So what we need to start doing is look for something that's potentially more than that. And right now, again, stage five, stage four, whatever we want to call it, it won't allow itself for that in the shape of a hybrid event. A hybrid event is both a conference and a virtual meeting. And this is something we could start seeing in level three, maybe level two, where we can start collecting in groups of no less than 50 people. And what you would do there is you would have something called a pod, which I'll touch on a bit later. You would have multiple pods around the country in a virtual uh, roadshow. So we'll get into that in a little bit. You can also have hybrids of that in the form of individuals at home or people in groups, no more or no less than 50, so that you can have multiple different people from each pod presenting to the main stage or to each individual. It it really depends. So these are what we've envisioned at USB of the different ways into the future. If you're a multinational or conglomerate, it could look like just multiple different pods stationed all over the country. So by a show in the chat, do you guys foresee something similar by using the number one? Yes or two, no. Would you like to unpack that a little bit? Would you like to maybe put your hands up using Alt-Y to ask a question about that before we continue? Cool. Looks like we're all on the same page, which is brilliant. So let's look at a little bit of an analogy. We've all heard this word webinar, and we've all heard of a video conference. So by definition, we are on a video conference right now in the form of Zoom. So you have multiple people. It's it's usually 100, 155, maybe 200 we could pop it out at. Uh, Just a little bit of trivia, Zoom in its pro version, you can have 100 people, then you can upscale that to a further 400, bringing the total to 500 for an extra $50. If you would like more information about that, we can always chat because I know a lot of you need to to learn the ins and outs of these different platforms. So what's a webinar? Well, a webinar is to thousands of people. Now, if we look at the difference between that, video conferences, I can see all of you on my screen here in a gallery view. Otherwise, we can converse face-to-face. Like if I want to speak to Mashambi using speaker view, we each will pop up. I can do that with anyone in the audience right now. In a webinar, we can't do that. It's a one-way communication. I am presenting to a faceless audience in a webinar. The most communication you can have in a webinar is through the use of a chat function. Does that all make sense? Do you want me to go into a little bit more depth? Otherwise, we can move along. But let me just show you this, which you'll have access to a little bit later in the slide downloads on the website under Mastermind Session 3. These are the definitions of what the two are. If clients ask, if clients want to know more, these are some of the tangible answers. Other words for a webinar are things like webcast. People call it casting. That comes from the gaming community. I haven't seen Ryan here, but Ryan from last week, he, he casts. He, he will take a video from Rocket League, the game he plays, and he'll cast it onto YouTube and he'll commentate. So that's, that's largely where the, the definition stems from. So now the the point of Zoom versus Teams, right? Sorry, I'm rushing through this because I do want to get to the Q&A a little bit later where I think the magic might lie. Let's talk about Zooms versus Microsoft Teams. This has been very contested in recent weeks. And maybe in the comments, you can put a couple of the things that you think of the two platforms. Personally, and USB, we prefer Zoom. It's a, it's a better platform for communicating with face-to-face using video. However, there is the security risk, which I do believe that the Zoom people um, are are working on furiously in the background. Teams, a little bit less user-friendly, a little bit less interaction, a little bit less uh, gimmicky, if you will. By gimmicky, I mean you can have reactions like the thumbs up or the clapping face uh, or clapping hands, rather, or you could use the share 
with annotation or you can have a whiteboard. So what I mean by annotation is largely this. So you have multiple formats. You can draw different things using different ones that you have available to you in your annotations. So you can click on the screen and you can type in text. Right? Can everyone see that hello pop up there? You can draw things. That's a highlighter or a pencil. You can create stamps, little hearts. So that's the different annotation techniques that you can use in Zoom, which aren't as great in Microsoft Teams. A webcast, you can't necessarily do that unless you use something called a virtual whiteboard, which Zoom has embedded within it. So if you go into share screen and you see how that works there, you'll see you can share screen or share a whiteboard. I'm not asking any of you to do it, please. Otherwise, everyone will start sharing screens. But when you have a moment, jump into a Zoom call and play with those different functionalities. By show of thumbs up, is everyone up, up to date with what Zoom has to offer? Is everyone happy? Must I slow down? Are we good? Cool. Brilliant. So if we look at the different webinar platforms, then we look at the different webcast platforms. Webinar Jam, GoToWebinar, BlueJeans are all beautiful platforms to use from that perspective. Listen, these do come with a price point. Go to webinar is probably your cheaper of the three. Webinar Jam comes in at a $6.99 price tag, but there's different functionalities for each one that you can go and look at on your own time. I don't really want to go into the depth of those because it comes down to preference. A, a, a very popular one, which I've started to see gain traction is on 24 as an ON and then the numerical 24.com. So have a look there, see if you can... Uh, find any form of, of uh, insights from those different platforms in terms of price point or, or case studies, usability. Uh, as Mushambi has spoken about earlier, is that we have to try, we have to test, and we have to stress test. And then hopefully, we'll get that, that, that uh, saying. Mushambi, what was it again that clients are supposed to say when you bring a, a solution? Demonstrazione. Say again? Demonstrazione. Exactly. So let me give you a little <laughs> bit of a demonstration about Zoom and their webinar function. It's also an upsell. You can go and purchase this for a, an extra $50. It's a one minute video and hopefully you'll be able to see the, the limitations um, of the video that Alex spoke about here because of bit rates. I'll get that uh, in the next bit. So have a listen. Expand your reach and build relevance with your target audience using Zoom video webinars. Zoom's flexible registration controls allow you to gather valuable information. Designate your interactive video panelists that can present and screen share with up to 10,000 attendees and to an unlimited audience with Facebook Live or YouTube streaming. The host can promote any viewer to an interactive panelist at any time. Live Q&A and chat allow you and your panelists to answer attendee questions on the fly. Registration, Q&A, and polling are all linked to detailed reporting. Zoom's powerful integrations help you get more out of your webinars. Monetize your content with our PayPal integration and simplify follow-up with our CRM integrations. Let your webinar live on after the live event by enabling our on-demand feature, allowing you to capture new registrants long after the webinars end. Webinars are perfect for town hall meetings, large-scale trainings, product announcements, marketing lead generation, and more. Reach a broader audience and grow your impact with Zoom video webinars. Cool. So just for anyone that might be thinking um, I'm paid by Zoom to, to play those videos, it's, it's nothing to do with that. Uh, it's everything to do with the functionality of the platform and some. So there's a specific way to, to upgrade different parts of your Zoom uh, functionality to get these different things. And that's just a starting point. Uh, Lauren, I see you have a question. Can I come to you real quick? Hello, Lauren. Cool. P perhaps that was a mistake. I'll just lower her hand real quick. So I would like to give you guys a little bit of a gift. Unfortunately, you'll still have to pay for it on the other end, but it answers a lot of questions. 
how do we get a green screen? Well, the gaming fraternity is a lot of different facets of, of this. And we see this through XSplit vCam. Write that down. I'm going to quickly hop into my vCam and set that up so I can show you exactly what that sees. Just give me a second. You guys can just drop that down. So can you see the functionality? You saw previously, I had a wall behind me, right? This is just my wall at home. But then when I go to remove, it goes into a green screen format. And then I can add different things in the background like this. Can you all see that by a show of thumbs up? Cool. So VCAM is $9.99 excluding VAT for a three month subscription. So I saw a lot of you asking questions, how do I do this? How do I do this without a green screen? Well, here's the answer. So there's other functionalities that this allows for. Let me quickly, if you just give me a second, I'll hop into that. And have you seen or heard of a virtual set just by a show of number ones in the chat? A virtual set is basically like a newsroom. Yeah, cool, brilliant. A lot of you are doing that. I'm just opening up the software. Some of the softwares you can use is something called OBS Studio. And what I'm doing here is I'm just opening up a preset that I, I had done before we started. Unfortunately, I can't run it at the same time um, as Zoom just because of the bandwidth that it uses. I'd, I'd steal the ability for the speakers to be heard. So just give me a sec while this loads. Uh, so far, guys, are you happy with all the information? Is there any questions you'd like to ask by a show of Alt-Y hands? Cool. Brilliant. It's still loading the preset. Just give it a second. It's quite big. So what you'll start seeing is things like this. So I can present our presentation from today using my screen instead of a share screen. Cool. And then what I can do is position myself as the presenter with the slides, which side? It's this side, the slides in the background. So this is what's capable with different types of software. You can also play videos through this. You can also play different types of audio and videos. So the, the bitrate that I spoke about in, in video is largely slowed down because of this process. Uh, this process does increase some form of latency. You might see a slowdown in my voice coming through, but that's, that's largely expected. Cool. There's other ways of doing this. Let me show you this real quick. Here's a virtual set. You have the ability to zoom into different parts of the virtual set. And then you can add in transitions to come into different sets. Cool. So that's a little bit about technology in the background of, of what's possible. And let me just quickly end all of this so I can come back into normal view. Do you all have any questions about that right now? Jewel, I see you have a question. Can I come to you? Hello, Joe. I'm actually good. Thanks, Callum. Okay, perfect. Cool. I'll just drop that down. So that's the technology that we've come across. There are multiple different ways of doing this. You could potentially have some form of uh, a live setup where you have a, a real set with a physical LED screen and a physical stage with multiple different cameras and achieve the same thing. But obviously right now, we can't because of the, the lockdown. Cool. I'm going to move on to the next part now. I just need to reopen my presentation, which I had to close, uh, talking to you about some myths and some myth busting about, you know, the, the usual things you'd hear from a client, for example, won't I cannibalize my attendance? Won't I have less people show up to my actual event if I use a hybrid model? So let me just pull that up. And I'll tell you a little bit of a story. 
Sorry, it's a bit choppy, guys. Just jumping in and out of technology does lend itself to be a little bit unstable from my side. Obviously, everything would be pre-done from a virtual set ex ex example um, previously seen that you have the, the set design, but I was just using that as a demonstration purpose. So over here, by a show of hands, uh, maybe one of you can answer this. What are we looking at here? Is it, is it a rugby match or what is it? Yes, Nadia. It is um, American football and one of the teams are the Patriots. I can recognize Boom, you know your American football. Brilliant. Thank you for that, Nadia. So this is the Mercedes-Benz Stadium and this is what we call the Super Bowl. And it's an annual event with some of the biggest viewership levels basically recorded in sport. So what that looks like is 99 million people watched it digitally with 70,000 people in the stadium. That means 1% of people were live at this event. Now, what does that mean? Well, it means we have reach. It means that we can do a lot more with a lot more different things from, from the perspective of doing things in Joburg and having it casted to the whole of South Africa, uh, maybe even Africa. For example, we have an event tomorrow that I'll be facilitating, which is in 54 countries with 1,000 odd people all attending at once. This is the first time they've had this level of engagement across any level before. They're very nervous about it naturally, as, as you would be. But the thing is, we're not going to cannibalize the in-person engagement because you're expanding it to a whole different thing. And, I mean, if we think about it from, from the perspective of people not attending events because of family commitments, because of traffic, because of late meetings, if we have a virtual line in, we can just scoot over to, to Google, log in via the browser, and we can still gather that information. So we need to think about it from that perspective, specifically with product launches, media events, etc. So the next thing I want to talk about, and I, I want to get a gauge from the, the crowd, who knows what Fortnite is? Um, Fortnite, let me get into that real quick, is a game. Your children will probably play it. And it's called a, a Royale game where 100 people all go into this virtual map and they fight each other in this virtual world. So in this virtual world, Fortnite has been known to put on some amazing different things. And one of them happened about six days ago called Astronomical. Travis Scott is a rapper and he performed live to this virtual world in Fortnite. Now, by a guess, how many people do you think attended? Just pop it into the comments real quick. Fifteen thousand, hundred thousand, ten million, hundred thousand. No, twenty-eight million people were in this specific event. Now, if you look over here, get V bucks. A thousand V bucks is nine dollars ninety-nine cents. So this is just half twelve dollars, which is about three million rand, and. What you do is you get skins to look like Travis Scott so you can play with his virtual character. And Travis Scott eventually arrived within this virtual world in this massive uh, augmented reality version of himself. And he had a concert for 10 minutes. So the, the question that I want to pose to everyone and probably start having you think about is, has the new normal arrived or is it still to arrive? And in my opinion, I think it's arrived because the, the centennials, the generation X, the generation millennials are all already partaking in this. It's the new normal. It's the reality. Our clients might not think that because it's, it's something they haven't been exposed to. And this is what I want to do today. I want to expose you to all these different processes of getting people interacting in a virtual world. It, it, it exists today.